Welcome to the course of design of power electronic converters. We were discussing the module of thermal design. Now let us look further into thermal modeling. Now previously we discussed uh, thermal modeling of your uh, steady state response and transient response. We took a very very simple circuits. So the circuits we took were like this uh, that uh, the power dissipation was uh, modeled as a current source and uh, then uh, we had thermal resistances and these thermal resistances were taken as electrical resistances. So, this were like the junk between thermal resistance between junction to case then between case to sink and uh, then thermal resistance from sink to ambient. And uh, the ambient temperature was taken as the reference and this point uh, was uh, taken as the junction temperature. So, the temperatures were uh, behaving analogous to voltage. And uh, this kind of a, a steady state uh, response uh, we saw that when can we to take it. And then uh, there can be instances where there may be a sudden change in the uh, in the power dissipation levels and then there will be also a transient response. So, those uh, 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 places where transient model is important there we saw that that uh, we can use thermal impedance graphs. So, up till here whatever we have discussed is uh, is a very very simplified thing. Now, let us look into an actual device a power semiconductor device. So, here this uh, shows an internal structure of an integrated module. This I have shown before also to you when we discussed power semiconductor devices and uh, this uh, is a module by Semicron and here what you see is that these are the DC terminals and these are the uh, two AC terminals which are shown and then there is this IGBT and this anti parallel diode chip. So, you can see here that there are several IGBTs which are actually connected in parallel and similarly this is the diode chip and then these are the uh, wires that you can see that and uh, here this is uh, connected to um, uh, these traces. So, uh, uh, what we see here is that that on a common plate you know, we see several of uh, these devices which are placed and externally you will be seeing this thing will be inside a casing like this. So, now when heat dissipation uh, happens inside it. So, uh, sometimes the diode may be conducting, sometimes the IGBT may be conducting and uh, before uh, we saw that uh, based on which modulation strategy you are using or what kind of topology it is and uh, what is the operating point, uh, the uh, switching loss and conduction loss they keep varying. And uh, it, it is a complex phenomena the conduction losses and switching loss uh, we can just have an estimate of it we uh, saw that. Further even if we estimate it what you can see that here the way the heat will be distributed or the way the heat is going to flow that path is not something very fixed it is not a uniform homogeneous path that uh, you know, we can observe here. So, there are multiple components kept there are so many things that are inside it. So, the heat distribution the flow of heat its conduction is not going to be something very simple uh, it is going to be a complex phenomenon. So, then uh, if we want to estimate the junction temperature using a model like this then uh, or just by using uh, some graphs of course, if it is experimental graph then it is still ok. Uh, but uh, otherwise if we take just very simple models like this uh, then it will be giving us erroneous information or erroneous estimation of the junction temperatures. So, the best way to find out what could be the junction temperature based on how much thermal losses that might be taking place is 
uh, by doing what is called as a FEM analysis finite element methods. Now uh, in this course we will not be looking into all that. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, FEM, FEM is basically it is like uh, mesh analysis method where you divide the structure into very very thousands of small structures and then the analysis is performed. Uh, but uh, that is an analysis which uh, requires uh, software um, and uh, uh, those software then you have to learn it then you have to understand how FEM can be used uh, for finding out how the junction temperatures are rising based on whatever thermal losses that may be happening. So, uh, uh, what people do is that they use much simpler models which gives uh, 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 good estimations of your junction temperature, how the junction temperature may be varying with the power dissipations. So, those simplified models are uh, based on these kind of uh, equivalent circuits. So, this is uh, an equivalent circuit you can see here that this consists of a capacitor and a resistor. And uh, 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 this is for junction to case sub uh, this kind of an equivalent circuit can be done. Then from case to sink another um, R and C circuit can be done. And then similarly for your heat sink that means sink to ambient again another can be drawn. And uh, here uh, uh, what you observe is that, that this is let us say if the change in power dissipation. So, this could be something like this the response of uh, the change in the junction temperature accordingly and this could be for uh, the case temperature Tc and this could be uh, the response of the sink temperature. Now, using this if we connect all of them, so this is kind of a, a we will get a network like this where you have this uh, power dissipation which is in the form of a current source and then these uh, RC equivalent circuits are just connected one after another. So, now uh, when we look into it now this can be uh, modeled as several small small RC circuits and then they can be connected together. And also note that here there is what something what is called as a thermal coupling means many times your uh, these IGBTs diodes many of the components are placed on the same base plate. So, if uh, one of the devices uh, their losses that are taking place and it is getting heated then uh, because of it what will happen because if it is all mounted on the same base plate kept on the same base plate. So, then through that the heat will transfer and it will transfer to the other components as well. So, they will also get heated. So, that means there will be thermal coupling between them. Okay. So, now um, these kind of simple RC that we are uh, taking and if we are connecting them. So, somewhat uh, we can show that there is connection between all these things and then they are just not uh, in individual elements and we can treat their temperatures individually like this here we have taken everything as discrete and separate. So, there can be several RCs that can be there for a particular device that can be modeled. Now, how many of them may be there that depends on the physical structure and uh, the manufacturers um, how uh, what kind of experiments they are performing and how many RCs they are taking. So, many of them may be there or sometimes only few 3, 4 may be uh, RC may be connected. Okay. So, so, then this kind of uh, connection is, is performed and this is what is called as the uh, ladder network or uh, or also called as the core network. So, then this can be used to, to find out what is the junction temperature or in between at different places like your case or the sink, uh, how much is the temperature and how is the temperature varying. So, uh, 
uh, what we are doing here is that let us say here this is how your temperature uh, your power dissipation was varying then uh, you can simulate it and then uh, based on it you can find out how is this junction temperature Tj over here this is the point of junction Tj varying at uh, this point let us say uh, uh, there is uh, uh, this is for the case now these many of them can be from junction to case and uh, then uh, there may be few for uh, case to sink also let us say there is only one from case to sink. So, this will be for the uh, sink temperature. So, here again uh, you can observe uh, how the case temperature is varying based on uh, the way the power dissipation curve or the uh, whatever is the signal that is varying here. So, how is the case temperature varying and similarly you can observe how is the sink temperature may be varying and then uh, you can keep uh, the ambient temperature is fixed or that also may be varying. So, you can observe all these things. So, these are like simplified uh, spy simulations that can be performed like a very simple thermal model that can be used uh, in your spy simulations uh, and then it can be used to, to observe how the temperatures, the case temperature, the junction temperature or in between also the temperatures at the various places inside the module that may be varying, so you can get an estimate of it. Now, uh, uh, this is more or uh, less this is based on the physical structure of the uh, power device. Uh, but sometimes what happens is that not actually sometimes many times we are interested in this junction temperature and uh, the case temperature. We are just interested in the final nodes, we are not interested in uh, inside what is happening like the whole of this power module can be treated like a black box. So, there uh, uh, another model can be used uh, that is uh, your uh, this one uh, which is uh, uh, here R and C are in parallel. So, this is like this equivalent to another equivalent instead of this one it is uh, RC in parallel. So, you can have from junction to case then case to sink and then sink to ambient. So, this kind of RC equivalence may be there and again um, you can obtain this uh, junction temperature, case temperature, sink temperature how they vary the response can be observed. And so, if we connect all of them together and then represent it in the form of a network. So, this is kind of the type of the network that you will be obtaining. And uh, this what it gives is your uh, uh, more uh, it matches with this kind of response of only the input and the output temperature. So, only if we are uh, interested in the final junction temperature then this uh, model can also be used. So, this is uh, um, also called as the chain tie network and uh, it is also known as the foster network. The manufacturers of data sheets uh, may or may not provide these uh, uh, information or R or C values of your uh, foster or core networks. It depends some of the, the manufacturers they provide some do not. Now, let us look into the data sheets of some of the devices. Uh, this is the data sheet of an IGBT and uh, the ratings are uh, this uh, your 1200 volt and uh, current rating and case temperature of 100 degrees C is 45 amperes and V C on this collected to emitter on state voltage drop is typical voltage drop is 1.7 volt and maximum junction temperature is given as 150 degrees C. Now, this data sheet uh, we have uh, looked into it before and at that time I had discussed uh, several of the parameters that are mentioned in this data sheet. Uh, but I had skipped uh, the um, terms which are associated uh, with the thermal design. So, let us look into those now. 
So, what here you see is that the maximum junction temperature is mentioned here which is 150 degree C. Now, let us see further. So, further what we see here is that uh, here you can see that this is uh, your uh, thermal resistance junction to case. Now, this is the steady state resistance. You can see here uh, this is given as uh, 0.39. So, this is your 0.39 R theta junction to case which is mentioned and it has got an anti parallel diode. So, that is also given of the diode which is 0.56. So, thermal resistance of the diode is more and from case to sink this is given is 0.24. Now, they have mentioned 0.24, but you should note that for what they have mentioned they have written that for flat and greased surface the case to sink typical thermal resistance uh, that uh, you may get is about 0.24. And uh, uh, what could be the total thermal resistance that is from junction to ambient that means this is the sum of the three your junction to case, case to sink and then sink to ambient. So, if we add up all of them it could be about 40 as the typical value. Okay, so, degree Celsius per watt is the unit in which this thermal resistance is provided. So, further if we look for thermal characteristics in the data sheet. So, you will observe that uh, these two graphs are provided and this is your thermal impedance graphs. So, here what we observe that this is the thermal response that means your thermal impedance from junction to case and on this x axis these are your uh, T p value or T 1 what it is uh, written over here it is denoted as T 1 is the rectangular pulse duration. So, uh, that means if you have a rectangular pulse like this so the duration of this pulse is T 1. So, uh, with respect to that then what is measured over here is the thermal impedance. Okay, so, this is what is the thermal impedance that is provided okay. and then uh, you see that finally, it reaches to uh, this value which is your uh, which will be usually close to your or uh, steady state values. Now, this is for single pulse, single pulse means we have discussed this before. So, that means you just give a pulse like this and that is it after that you stop. That means it is not a repetitive pulse and uh, then it also gives other graphs. You can see here that this is written as 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2.5. So, these are the duty ratios. So, uh, uh, what uh, we mean here is that so duty ratio. So, if we have a repetitive pulse like this which let us say your time period over here is T s. So, duty ratio will be T 1 by T s. So, T 1 value is given and duty ratio value is also given. So, you can definitely find out the T s value then. So, for those also for those kind of repetitive pulses then these uh, thermal response that means your uh, thermal impedances they are also provided here ok. Uh, and uh, now what we see here is that that uh, this kind of a network is provided and uh, this network you can see here this is uh, here this uh, node it is written as tau j that means this is the junction temperature node and T c that is your case temperature node. So, in between that uh, 4 R C uh, have been connected. So, that means they have divided uh, between your junction to case uh, into 4 R C's alright. I, I told you that there can be several R C uh, which can be connected it depends on how many times they want to divide the structure into. So, here uh, the manufacturer has uh, shown here for 4 RCs and uh, you can see that, that those um, R1 values are also given here for these 4 uh, R's and uh, then uh, instead of giving the value of uh, capacitance directly 
they have given the time constants for each one of them. And so, you can find out the capacitance values also. So, this over here is denoted as tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, tau 4, these are the time constants. So, from uh, here you can uh, get an idea of the, the simple model, the uh, coward network that you can form and then also from there you can see what is the, the, the how the junction temperature may be varying based on the what is the power dissipation that is happening. Now, further uh, we see that there is another graph which is shown below and uh, this is the junction to case for the diode. So, this graph is for the diode, the upper one is for the IGBT. So, the same thing has, is provided for uh, the diode also. You can see here that these are uh, the duration of the rectangular pulses and uh, then uh, based on a single pulse first this thermal response is given, the value of thermal impedances are provided. And uh, then further for different different values of duty ratios also they are provided. And then uh, this uh, cover network uh, that uh, they have used uh, uh, for uh, this diode, um, I mean the IGBT with parallel to diode for that also they have given the value. So, these resistance here uh, you can see that for the diode model they have provided and also the corresponding time constants are given here. Now, let us look uh, into the data sheet of a MOSFET. This data sheet also we have uh, discussed before. Now, uh, here we will be just uh, looking into again those uh, things which are important from thermal design perspective. So, this is 200 volt, 200 volt 94 ampere MOSFET and this is the RDS on value which is uh, provided here which you can use for your uh, conduction loss calculation. Again conduction loss and your switching loss calculation using the different uh, uh, parameters that are provided in the data sheet, the turn on times, turn off times those also in great length we have discussed when we discuss the power semiconductor devices. So, those I am not uh, um, revisiting those things again here. So, uh, now here you can see that this is your junction to case uh, thermal resistance which is provided as 0.26 for the MOSFET. Now, uh, in this case uh, what we see is that for the diode separately it is not provided. Okay, because it is part of the MOSFET itself, it, it has the body diode. Okay, and then your case to sink, the case to sink your greased surface flat grease surface typical value is 0.24 is given and then what could be for junction to ambient for this device that is given is 40 degree Celsius per watt. Now, here you can see that uh, this is your rectangular pulse uh, duration. So, this is that rectangular pulse. And the time period of the repetitive pulse is denoted here as uh, T2 and the PDM is the magnitude of the power dissipation. So, if we have to calculate the peak temperature, junction temperature Tj, you will be using the formula of PDM, this uh, PDM into uh, your uh, thermal impedance that you obtain from this graph plus the case temperature Tc. So, here you can see that uh, this is for the single pulse that means non-repetitive and then further if you give repetitive pulses the duty ratios are provided over here and uh, the thermal response the thermal impedance are given over here. So, this is something similar to what uh, we saw in the previous data sheet of IGBT. But uh, note down here uh, they have not uh, given any equivalent circuit uh, those RC values are not provided. So, that is what I was telling you that uh, it depends on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers they provide some they do not uh, those uh, network in a, a what could be used for uh, seeing how the temperatures may be vary. Now, let us look for those same things in uh, the data sheet of a diode. So, this is a fast recovery diode 80 ampere 600 volt and what we see from here is that 
that your uh, this uh, thermal uh, characteristics your junction to case uh, resistance and junction to ambient resistance that is provided. So, junction to case thermal resistance is 0.85 and uh, 50 could be the maximum thermal resistance from junction to ambient and here you can see that the thermal response that is your thermal impedance graph is provided. The same thing uh, uh, ZTH junction to case and uh, T1 is the square wave uh, duration. So, the single pulse and uh, then for different different duty ratios for repetitive pulses also these graphs are provided and uh, 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 I mean you can use it in a similar way that we saw for your MOSFETs and your IGPT. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that the heat distribution uh, in a device is a complex phenomena. And, uh, uh, there are many complex methods by which uh, the uh, junction temperature could be analyzed. But uh, usually uh, for power electronic engineers uh, they are more complicated and uh, people like to use simple models and simplified models are like your foster and core networks which uh, can be used for uh, finding out the input uh, temperatures and the output temperatures, the TJ junction temperature without going into lot of details. And uh, uh, in the data sheets by um, manufacturers, uh, sometimes uh, they give the information for cover networks, sometimes they do not. But, uh, uh, all the data sheets uh, they provide the information of thermal resistances of the device and the thermal impedance graphs of the device. Thank you.